How many of you guys remember playing with colored pencils when you were kids? <laughs> I used to enjoy doing that, but you know what? There's a way we can use colored pencils for, in our hobby uh, for making our, use weathering our models. And these weather pencils, or sorry, these colored pencils are from uh, AK Interactive. So let's take a look at the product. All right, so you know, when AK Interactive brought out these these colored pencils. Uh, I was actually kind of thinking, what? I mean, it's kind of weird. Uh, because again, I've, I've I have I used to do a lot of artwork when I was a kid, uh, just coloring uh, different pictures with colored pencils, and it just seemed kind of strange. But what I was intriguing to me at the time was two things. The price was like a buck fifty. I mean, that's really cheap for a colored pencil. Uh, I don't know what these are where you're at, but that was for me. Dollar fifty was awesome, and they came colored or with color names that made sense. This one is called Medium Rust. Oh, Dark Rust. This was uh, dust or rain marks, and my favorite chipping effect or chipping color. I am not good with a sponge. Okay, using a sponge for chipping, it's just I'm not. It's it's not. I'm not good. Okay, I'm just talk about fail. <laughs> That's me. So I was really intrigued with that. So what I do, I grabbed quickly grabbed the rust and a, a chipping effect and went home and tried it out. I was pretty impressed, to be honest with you, how easy and how well it worked. So what I'm going to try to do today is let you see how they work and you can make up your own mind. Uh, for me, I do know I'm going to add these to my set of tools for weathering. And as you might know, uh, if you've been with my channel very long, uh, you know, I use chalks, I use actual mud, uh, as well as airbrush, uh, different types of paints. So it's always nice to have another tool uh, in your toolbox to come up with certain weathering effects. So let's take a look at how these work on a real model. Did I say one model? I guess I lied. <laughs> We're not going to go through all these, but I wanted to, um, to, I wanted to put some out there because I want to play around with them. Kind of, I guess live is the best way to put it. Uh, so. Again, I'm going to try a couple different things. I'm going to definitely use the uh, rust. I'm going to show you what, how the rust looks on a tank. I already put some rust on this one. I'm going to use the chipping effect and see how that works, the chipping color, on my Vickers tank because this one, the paint is actually, uh, I've noticed Army Painter's skeleton bone is doesn't really hold the other paints on top of it real well. So it ends up with a lot of chipping just through wear. So I'm going to go ahead and replace that with the chipping color. So we'll see how that works. And as figuring using the dust, uh, I'll try to use that on the Crusader I've already um, weathered because I think that might be a good good place to show it. Or even the uh, C4P. We'll see. Maybe even on a, one of these uh, Western Desert ones where I've already used AK Interactive's uh, North, North African weathering uh, like medium. So, alright, so let's kind of get started. I'm going to start with the medium rust. Okay, so let's clear away some of these models. And I'm going to show you what I, what really sold me. Now, this may be a little too subtle, uh, but we'll see. On this particular uh, casting from uh, Company B, it's I did a product review video on this one a while back. I really do like it. But unfortunately, when it came to me, it, it did have a break. There's supposed to be a lift ring. And you can see the lift ring is actually has a hole in it. I mean, it's detailed. Well, on this side, it was already broken off. So I figured, well, you know what? Instead of trying to fiddle with it and try to you know, shave it off or do anything, I'm going to make it look like damage. So I actually used the rust color, the medium rust. What's it called? It's actually called... Yes, medium rust. And let's see if you can see, I put rust on it and, and streaking it down below using just a little bit. I, it actually came out pretty nice. Now, my weathering tends to be subtle. This is otherwise uh, airbrushed with some uh, dust kind of color. Uh, I forget, I think it was flat earth is really what I used, but I honestly forget what I used. But I put that, there you can see the, the rust right below. And it was just a matter of streaking it, just like I was using it when I was a kid. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at how to do that on uh, the Crusader. All right. All right. So I'm going to take the hull, uh, the Crusader, uh, not do the turn. I'm going to do it on the hull, and 
let's find a good spot here. I'm going to use, let's see, here on the front, I'm going to use this, and we're going to simply, right here on the, the very bottom edge, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of there. See, it goes on really, really easily. Hopefully you can see that. Here, I'll put it, um, I'm going to use on the Sherman. Go here in the back. Uh, let's see. Now, let's do it on the side. Here, we'll put it where this lift ring is. We'll just say the paint's gotten chipped a bit, and now there's some sh rust streaking down. Okay. Very simple, easy to apply. Here in the back corner, just put a little bit there. Nothing. Doesn't have to be heavy. Make it as heavy as you want. Okay. Again, I go for light weathering. You see, I already streaked this with the diesel oil that I used a, essentially a black wash for. And that works out pretty well. Now, on let's see, on this Crusader turret, I'm gonna go ahead and right here in this fitting, right in the front, I'm just gonna bring it down just a little bit. Just a, just a little bit of weathering there, where it would streak down from the roof. Okay. It literally is just simple drawing. It, it works out really well. And then you just have to spray this with uh, like a dull coat uh, to seal it in there. But extremely easy to use. And at a dollar fifty or dollar seventy-five, I don't know what it's. It's definitely cheaper than uh, some of your other watercolors that are out there. The watercolor is actually main, meant for, you know, on paper. So this goes on very, very easily. And I've seen some other comparisons where it's, it's as good as, you know, goes on as easily as others, uh, regular, like, watercolor pencils or whatever. But I find it goes on really well. Now I'm going to try the chipping medium here. And I'm going to go over these areas that have, you can see how the paint's worn off. So what better place to use this? then on that so and make sure this, yeah this is chipping color okay so I'm gonna just go ahead and okay here along the bottom Now these are dull coated, by the way, because these, these were finished models already, so uh, that shouldn't have any bearing. I just want to make sure you understand that this is not freshly painted. And then you're just gonna nick it up there, and then here up on top. Here on the front grill. Here are the light. Immediately it dulls it right down, <laughs> which is good. I need that. A lot of these rivets, there's got some wear on them, uh, paint wear. So this is another use, <laughs> uh, just unintended, since I've gotten some actual paint wear on this. I've been able to use the chipping one to kind of get rid of and disguise that. There we go. Starting to look up, look pretty good here on the turret itself. I mean, that's pretty bad. So, there we go. Just using the side, forcing it on there. It goes on real nice. It's very smooth. Now, once you've done your chipping effect, you can actually go over it. This is actually a metal piece, so. Uh, 
now take the you guys should take the rust and since it's been chipped you can add some rust to it so let me do it where it's a little more apparent Let's see here on the, on the side here just start pulling down Rust, it's kind of hard to see, you know, is different from the brown, but we're going to see how it overlaps here. Just using the rust right on where it was chipped. And actually, that looks kind of good too. So, here, just pull it down. That's very, very subtle there. Go back onto the turret. Just some little lines. Okay, put it right there. Okay. Not a lot. I don't want it to have heavy weathering. Uh, sorry, heavy rusting, because it just—it's not to me. It's not realistic. Um, the equipment was taken well, taken care of, and honestly, did not survive long. Uh, most most vehicles didn't survive very long uh, in combat, so you, you don't get to see how heavily, heavily weathered. But you can. So there we go. Now, now the chipping effect has pretty well covered up all that uh, missing paint. So now I'm going to put some uh, nice heavy dull coat on here. Yeah, there's some rust I can put there. That's a metal part. Um, and then I it works for me. It looks works really really well. I like it. Uh, I've actually going to buy some others. They've got quite a line of these, including some rubber colors, which I don't think I'm going to use. Uh, let's take a look, though, at the... Here's a uh, brain carrier with the Chaunter, uh, Chaunter paint scheme. And I've used some AK International's, uh, or AK Interactive's uh, North Africa wash and gave it some color there. But what I wanted to do is also, you know, I want to actually nick up some of these these guards. So I'm gonna just take the edge here and do like this. So that really shouldn't be. You know, the edges should be kind of chipped a bit. Oops, I just put my ATR gun. <laughs> All right. There we go. It, it's subtle, but I can tell. To me, it looks good. And then I'm going to actually add some of this lighter uh, tan dust or rain streaks. Now, rain streaks and desert is kind of crazy, but I think this lighter color gray might go well in uh, dull down some of this really harsh uh, western desert look so just kind of I have not used this one yet so this is the first time we're going to try it on this and we're going to try it on a uh, olive drab tank it's hard to see it on this on the darker colors it is easier to see all right so we're going to go ahead and rain wash then um, this C4P okay uh, should be pretty well uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna end up doing some uh, mud effects or earth effects down here but I want to have some uh, dust streaks coming down you can put it on and wipe it off now this is a 3d print so it's got some ridges to it and so just color like you would when you were a kid Rub it. I always try to smooth it or 
uh, faded a little bit, uh, blend it with my fingers. This adds some, uh, try to stay off the window. This is it's got some dust washed down on its side a little bit. Again, it's a very subtle uh, kind of weathering, but I think it works okay. I, th I think I'd rather do uh, airbrush for large areas like this. I'll probably use, save using a pencil like this for small areas where it would collect. For example, here on this, it would collect along that corner, and so your rain streak is more likely to be likely to be back here along that seam. And so just you know a little bit like that. Um, so that there. Let's see on my this turret here, this tank here. I think this would actually the rain would kind of the dust would wash down here. Off these little guards, you see the little raised portion there. So that's more where it would be. Of course, you make this as heavy as you want. Uh, I again I'm a more in I like subtler weathering uh, when I hold the, the model up close to me I, I want to be able to see the weathering when it's on the table it will probably be nondescript so it's probably going to be heavier back here very easy to use you know, if you can draw, you can color with a crayon, you can use these, <laughs> okay. Um, I think it's worth it. I think it's a very good good addition to your toolbox. Let's see, where would I put it on here? It's a tough call, because given the way it's, you know, I've got it so covered with other material, you know, the canvas, the tracks, track links. Not sure I put it on here. So I think it looks good the way it is. All right, so that is AK's weathering pencils. Now they've got quite a few. I don't remember how many they've got. I'll put a link if I can find one to uh, you know down in the description below. I stumbled across these in my hobby shop, and I really do kind of like them. So I'm not going to get all of them. I mean. There are certain ones, especially the rusts. I love the being able to be very specific with the, you know, applying the rust to very very small areas. So I love the rust one. I love the chipping one because I can finally do some chipping and not really mess it up. I can get exactly where I want because of the pencil. So, so I like them. I hope you guys do too. Give it a try. You know, what's what's a couple bucks for a, a pencil? Give it a shot and see if it will be a good tool for you. Alright, so thanks for watching this video, and share, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye, guys.